Welcome to the next exciting episode brought to you by Milo Manx. Today's episode is called Teaching an Old Dog New Tricks Transaxle Assembly. This is a, a trick I taught myself and it might help a couple other people like VW Darren and Gino Boyd and anybody else that builds transaxles. I watched a lot of videos on YouTube and uh, they all seem to be struggling trying to get the carrier assembly into the case. I thought there's got to be a better way and this is a trick I learned. Let's take a look. You have your carrier assembly sitting on the bench with these two holes up. I use that board there to support it. Set your reverse gear in along with the uh, fork. You have your guide studs in. These are 3 8 US coarse studs, but they fit loose into the uh, factory retaining plate holes and they work out good. Another thing you have to do is put it into reverse. I use this block of wood, you can use anything you want to hold it into reverse gear. You got to make sure it doesn't snap into neutral. When you're trying to get the reverse gear lined up, you can reach into the case and turn the idler gear to get the splines to line up. That'll help you too. You have your transmission case sitting on the bench just like this with the top of it towards you. When you start to put the uh, carrier assembly, assembly into it, first you got to guide the studs into the uh, pinion bearing plate holes. Next thing to do is guide the uh, main shaft into this hole then it will come down the carrier assembly and it will kind of stop and that's because the uh, reverse gear is not lined up with the threads on the reverse idler so you stick your finger in through here we're there, here, we're there, and you can wiggle it, the reverse gear. If it's tight, just hold up on the carrier a little bit and get it started on that shaft. It works out real easy. Now I'm going to show you how easy this is. The studs go in first. Then you get your main shaft in. That time the gear went right on, the reverse gear right, went right on the shaft. Can't believe it. The 
but like I said, if it doesn't, it will stop right about there. That's when you get your finger in here. Hold up on the carrier assembly a little bit. Reach in and turn your eye look here. I have my finger in the hole, circling around, and lined up with the reverse gear shaft, and there you go. And now, if you heat the uh, pinion bearing area, it'll drop in. I usually find that When you get everything lined up right, correct like this, it pretty much taps right in, as long as it's lined up perfectly. But there you go. This is Milo Max. Later. In addition to the new trick, I'm tearing my transaxle apart again. It's popping out of a uh, second gear and once in a while first. I've did all the usual adjustments with the shift rod and uh, the clutch and made sure the, uh, what do you call those things, the connection between the shift rod and the transaxles, shift rod. Anyway, that's in good shape. The coupler, that's it, the coupler. Because before, when I rebuilt it, I had new bushings put into the carrier and there might have been a possibility that the second gear lever, first and second gear lever, had no resistance. It didn't stick in the gear that you put it into. But that's fine. I put everything back in there correctly. This is the... Uh, pinion gear stack I have a uh, five thousandths clearance between second and third I have six thousandths clearance between first and the pinion bearing shim so far so good I'm thinking that the problem is the slider and or first and second gear detents the little knobs are worn or something I've yet to tear it apart but that's where I'm at we can't have that popping out of second gear I already did a video on the uh, crush because the factory manual calls for a uh, six and a half to seven th seven and a half thousandths crush on that wave washer they call it a crush washer or preload washer whatever and uh, I'm sure that's correct because I've done that before that's also in a previous video so uh, here we go let's try it again 